Welcome to part eight of this eDesign Suite video series. In this episode, you will learn how to use the new Digital Power Workbench. This tool helps you develop digital power converters faster. It covers all the essential aspects of the design process, achieving your power efficiency target, reaching desired closed loop performance, generating firmware code ready to be used in your solution. Load the eDesign Suite page and select Power Management Design Center. Click Digital Power Workbench. For this tutorial, let's choose the STM32G474RE Vienna Rectifier topology, where the design of the power and control system of the PFC rectifier can be complex. It is typically used in high-power three-phase power factor correction applications, such as DC fast chargers for electric vehicles or industrial chargers. A default configuration is immediately available. The dashboard gives you a preview of the design with a fully annotated schematic and bill of materials, Bode diagrams, and efficiency plots. Here you can customize and refine your design and evaluate the outcome of each modification. The Converter Specifications section shows the microcontroller part number, the circuit topology implemented, the input operating voltage range of the AC section for the single phase, the output voltage and power level of the DC output section. Clicking the ST Reference Design button gives you the related product folder on ST.com. There you will find all the resources needed to evaluate the characteristics and performance of our reference design. The Operating Conditions section allows you to modify nominal operating conditions to suit your design requirements or, if you want, to evaluate design performance for differing operating scenarios. The Actuals section displays actual parameter values calculated for the specified operating conditions. They include average and RMS currents for diodes and transistors and phase AC input current. The dashboard also shows an editable board schematic of our Vienna PFC project. You can use the schematic to customize semiconductors and passive components according to your design requirements. Customization can be applied to inductors, silicon carbide diodes and silicon carbide MOSFETs, output capacitors, and input and output signal conditioning blocks. Click this link to design the auxiliary power supply. From the range of solutions, choose the appropriate auxiliary topology and configuration to supply the different blocks of the Vienna Power Converter. At the bottom of the dashboard, you'll find a current Bode diagram showing the current regulator magnitude and phase margin performance. This diagram is useful for assessing loop stability of the power factor correction. Next, the Semiconductor Efficiency Diagram helps you visualize the performance of diodes and MOSFETs across the whole power range from 0 to 15 kilowatt. The colored lines represent semiconductor efficiency. The green line represents efficiency at the operating voltage value. The blue line at the minimum voltage value, 185 volt. The red line at the maximum voltage value, 265 volt. And finally, a plot of the power losses for each phase of the design. Open it to see all conduction and switching losses in the diodes and MOSFET sections. The Bill of Materials section lists the different components with their characteristics and part numbers, including the selected ST microcontroller, diodes and MOSFETs, boost conductors and output capacitors, Click this link to access the Digital Power Vienna Design Wizard, where you can fully customize your design project based on specific requirements. All sections of the Design Wizard are editable. Start with the I.O. specification step. 
Choose your AC input voltage and frequency from a list of presets or set a minimum and maximum input voltage range. You can also specify DC output voltage and power levels, and the tool automatically estimates an output current value accordingly. In the General Constraints section, you can specify nominal input voltage, power factor target, average efficiency target, switching frequency. eDesign Suite suggests a default value in gray for any of these parameters based on the default operating conditions of the design. When you type in a different value, the wizard suggests the range of acceptable values. Let's now turn our attention to the power stage. Let's choose boost inductors and output capacitors that match our project requirements. In the boost inductor section, the inductance value is calculated from the desired peak-to-peak -peak maximum current ripple. You can also enter the wire resistance value. Correctly defining these values is critical because they affect many design parameters. If we modify the inductance value, the tool automatically updates the related current ripple value. In the output capacitor section, we can specify both the desired output voltage ripple and a commercial output capacitance value close to the value suggested by the tool. Based on our specification, the tool calculates and updates the output voltage ripple and ripple percentage. In the power switch section, eDesign Suite automatically selects a silicon carbide MOSFET that best fits the initial project specification. Based on this selection, you can review various design parameters, including drain source breakdown voltage, drain current, maximum drain source on resistance, and switching dynamic parameters. A diagram shows all MOSFET losses due to conduction and switching issues. Click the MOSFET part number if you wish to select a different power switch. The tool recommends the best power switch based on your design specifications and on calculated AVG losses, but you are free to select a different part number. eDesign Suite will automatically recalculate all losses. The process is similar for the boost diode selection step, which completes the power section part of the configuration process. Use the part number suggested by the tool or select another one. Let's now have a look at the control stage. The first control block in this stage is the sensing section. It is split into four blocks, input voltage sensing, input current sensing, output voltage sensing, output current sensing. All the modifications applied to the control stage will be reflected in the generated firmware. The input voltage sensing section is based on a specific circuit we have designed around the TSV911 wide bandwidth operational amplifier. Click the link here if you want to learn more about this device. You can modify any of these parameters. eDesign Suite automatically refreshes the whole project and updates all relevant fields. The input current sensing, output voltage sensing, and output current sensing sections follow the same logic. All these sections provide links to pages on our website, where you will be able to learn more about the solutions and specific devices selected. Let's now move to the wizard sections pertaining to digital regulation. Since we're dealing with a PFC, we need to manage control blocks for current compensation and voltage compensation. The current compensation section allows you to customize closed loop targets such as bandwidth and phase margin values. eDesign Suite suggests PI regulator behavior by updating KP and KI accordingly. The effect of any modification is also reflected in the Bode plot. The same procedure applies to the voltage loop, where the bandwidth target is different. 
The firmware protection section allows you to define operating thresholds, such as input over current protection threshold, input over voltage protection threshold and under voltage protection, output over voltage protection threshold, all of which will be implemented in the firmware. Moving on to the firmware additional settings section. Here you can enable debug testing procedures and customize your MCU configuration. You can evaluate how your solution behaves under open loop conditions or when only enabling the current loop control. You can modify current thresholds for the inrush current phase or the burst control phase. You can also set parameters for the PLL routine. Finally, you can enable the telemetry section that allows designers to monitor additional parameters. You can download the firmware project once you have completed all the design steps and modifications. Two files are generated. The IOC file enables all required STM32 peripherals. It is an STM32 Cube MX project file based on the Vienna Rectifier Expansion Pack that enables the generation of ready-to-compile digital power project files for supported toolchains. STM32 Cube IDE, IAR Embedded Workbench for ARM, and ARM Keel MDK. The STM32 Cube expansion enables the generation of firmware code for a Vienna Rectifier hardware topology solution. The STM32 Cube MX software development tool uses these two files to generate the source code that you upload to the STM32 microcontroller. Be sure to configure STM32 Cube MX with the Vienna Rectifier Expansion Pack before you load the IOC file in STM32 Cube MX. This is the STM32 Cube MX interface for uploading the IOC and Expansion Pack files. Select Install Remove Software Package. First, upload the pack file selecting the ST Microelectronics tab. Then upload the IOC file. The STM32 Cube MX interface confirms that the IOC and pack have been uploaded. A list of customizable parameters is available with documentation. To generate the firmware code, go to the Project Manager interface and click Generate Code. This is the firmware code generated by STM32 Cube MX. You are now ready to upload it to the STM32 MCU.